Hello and welcome to another episode of Modular in a Week. We're moving on to the next day and so we are back at drums because I've already done one uh, episode uh, a bit beforehand because we needed something to play with the gate signals. Uh, and that was uh, an extract from uh, uh, an old drum machine called the D-Bop. And those were that module did not uh, end up as a good module. But uh, as many pointed out, the bass drum was kind of nice in that one. And that is kind of what we're going to focus on today um, because that one was built around a filter called Twin T filter. And uh, today we're gonna make a simple Twin T filter. Uh, following again Elliot Williams on Logic Sound, Logic Noise uh, who does a really simple circuit with CMOS circuitry again uh, and let's see uh, how we can make a few of those bass and tom kind of drums. Really simple uh, and with one chip we can get two modules uh, out of uh, or not two modules two sounds so a module with two sounds we could get out of one chip so I'd like to say thank you to my patreons who support me by doing that over on patreon and you could too uh, you can check out some videos and content over there uh, if you go over there some is locked some is not uh, and with that let's go and look at where I found this, how to build this and uh, how we can tweak this to, to fit our needs. So the idea for this module also came from Hackaday, uh, Logic Noise, that uh, article series I've talked a lot about before. Uh, we did the 4106 hex oscillator bank from information from this article series. And now we come to filters and drums, and it's by Elliot Williams. So he explains what we're gonna do, and he goes into great detail of how this circuit and filters, stuff like that, works. Variable cutoff low pass filter, and then the twin T filter, that's the magic of this filter. So it's a notch filter that uh, so this is the circuit you have an input waveform and then an output and then depending on the resistor values here we get different frequencies and different decays uh, so in this circuit this is a dual ganged potentiometer so two potentiometers on one knob and then this is a normal one so this is a bit special if you don't have one of these um, I'm going to go through some values. I'm, there's a few ways we can do this. Uh, you could have two potentiometers that you just try to keep kind of the same values. Uh, so how to make drums then? We have a trigger input to this circuit and then we have a 4069 uh, oscillator here that slowly decays with the filter. We use two inverters for each drum sound so if we take a, a six pack or a one chip you has six of these inverters in them so we can actually from this make three twin T filter drum sounds. Uh, and this over here is just, so he just has a tempo oscillator just sending trigger signals. We're going to add a trig input here instead. And again he talks a lot about capacitors, what values we should have and what resistor values to have depending on what sound we want. So you can go to this and listen to his specific examples or wait a few minutes and I'm going to show a few values that we can use. 
So let's take this theory and get it into practice. So the schematics is quite straightforward. Uh, let's mark some things here. So here this is just the tempo oscillator so we will actually not be doing this. Uh, I've breadboarded this without this circuit here so this is just a 4106 a buffered uh, square wave oscillator. We, we can use one of the 4106 we have from the oscillator bank or any other gate to get a, uh, a gated signal into the twin T filter. Here's just a capacitor to take away some of the low end and making it a, a kind of more of a trigger instead of the gate which is inserted into the twin T filter which is this one here uh, which creates the sound with this decay pot and this dual ganged uh, tune pot to see what to set what the bass frequency the the drum sound should be and then another low pass filter here uh, with uh, that uh, takes away the click noise from the gate a little bit so we've breadboarded that here and the only special thing is we have a dual ganged pot. Uh, so if we connect this and listen to this alright sometimes uh, you get technical glitches and I actually lost a large portion of the recording of this. Uh, I'm not going to show how I built this, I just breadboarded this circuit uh, straight from as I showed you. Not doing the oscillator and instead I just have a jack with a square input. Now to make this module, uh, I want to make it as small as possible, three sounds, just one row with, with uh, jacks. So what I do is I I tune the decay pot and my tune, tuning dual gang pot to a, a value I want and then we remove power and we measure the wrong one <laughs> we measure the resistance of both the dual gang ones so we take that value we get and then we also measure on this one and with these values that we find from these readings uh, so I put down on paper a few of these uh, to get three kind of different uh, tuned and decay of sound so basically to get three toms or two toms and one bass drum after writing these down so I have then changed them to the closest standard format uh, value so 4k became 3.9k 50k point became 47k and so on uh, and then we just solder resistors in place and we don't need the expensive uh, potentiometers and also one more thing right now this one reacts both on the rising edge and the falling edge of the pulse and we don't want that and I've tried a few things which didn't work so now we're gonna add the Ken Stone gate to trigger uh, circuitry which will fix this issue in a good way so we need I need to add that schematics to this schematics and we will have a good module so I'm gonna solder this together so we can take a listen and here is the thought of front panel which is too u wide to just fit really snugly into the modular with three sounds and trying to come up with nifty funny names i've called this one tom 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 i want to show a uh, part of the uh, error checking process so the the last sound in this module 
it's just a really low sinus curve. Sounds very nice, but it's not a drum sound, so it's a, an error. And so I found the error, but so the uh, I want to show why you want a oscilloscope from time to time because the multimeter doesn't work always because I've checked so down here is the last gate to trigger uh, circuit and this one works fine and gives a gate out to the uh, drum uh, circuitry but I can't see that because if I I can see that we have power we have 12 volts of power there I can see that the the uh, voltage divider uh, which is in on pin 2 works we got one voltage there but on the output if I just hold it here and hold it for a bit this should be around 12 volts output and it just goes up, up to 0.10 so with the multimeter I know something is going out but I don't know that is going out and that's when the that's why you need a oscilloscope so we I need to check so we actually get uh, a pulse out uh, so we do that so if we instead look with the oscilloscope on pin out here we see that there is actually a pulse a really big pulse there uh, so doing what it should so that's good so then we know it's there uh, and that one goes into those two uh, capacitors over here uh, and we follow this here and we measure on this yellow cable where it comes from the uh, comparator it, there is a signal and on the pin next to it there is nothing and this so this happens from time to time and uh, it's not very usual but so what this is is uh, I didn't have enough on this row so I just expanded that row to those two pins there and what we have here is a classic cold solder um, which I really shouldn't show that I'm having in my work so this pin and this pin are technically supposed to be connected but when I measure it's not but if you move just a tiny bit up to this there you got it but not over here so there's a cold solder between here and I just need to warm this up just a wee bit to get this connected and then this circuit should work and when fixing that cold solder we have fixed the third drum sound as well and with everything working the self oscillation also stopped so now it works I've done it like this the first one is just fixed resistors uh, for the sound the second one is with the replaceable resistors so I can replace all the resistors the pair of resistors and the uh, for tune and the decay one and the third one I have fixed resistors for the tune and a multi turn pot for the uh, decay to really tune in that perfect decay uh, so this is just to show the different ways that you can do the different resistors to get this sound and you can have these as potentiometers one dual gang potentiometer for the tune and one for the decay and you can have them on the uh, on the front panel and then you would have two so it would be a lot of, of uh, controls but some people want that I just want to have one panel with just six jacks one input and one output for each sound and that will be hopefully I can make that like one or two U and with just three drum sounds. So let's uh, patch this up and uh, see what it sounds like with all the drums together.
So that is this for this module. We now have a 2 HP module when I get the right panel uh, with three drum sounds on. Uh, lots of cool drum modules I found so uh, we'll see how long this day will be uh, how many episodes we will do. I will do one more from Elliot Williams because this next article in the same series is a cool one using XORs to get a cowbell kind of sound. Uh, really interesting sounds that I think we should explore using the knowledge we've learned already in the first day of this modular in a week. Uh, this one was a bit loose around the edges as well, lots of experimentation to get the right sound, ho how you want to uh, place the the components, if you want front panel uh, decay pots, tune pots, stuff like that, or if you want them interchangeable, all that. Um, I hope this makes you want to experiment more and, and figure out more of your own ideas. And this is by no means or original ideas, it's just that the final thing that is more you, uh, because you decide how you want the drum sound to sound. Uh, I'll make a full uh, schematics of how to wire this up with the parts, the twin T filter, uh, what I removed from the, uh, the Elliot Williams schematics and then added the uh, gate to trigger uh, by Ken Stone and how you can build that together. So with that, hope you like this and that you're already subscribing or if not just press the subscribe and the bell so you know when the next episode comes out, like all that and comments, write them, uh, questions, everything uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.